Let's talk a little bit about the pooled variance T procedure and the Welch T procedure, which doesn't pool the variances together, and the appropriate choice between them in different situations. The pooled variance T procedure assumptions are that we have independent random samples from normally distributed populations and that the population variances are equal. Now the advantages of this procedure, it is an exact procedure, so if those assumptions are perfectly true, then our test statistics say we'll have exactly a t-distribution, which is nice. It is also consistent with other common statistical procedures that we use a little bit later on, like ANOVA and regression, meaning we'd come up with the exact same results if we use the pooled variance t-procedure or if we used ANOVA or regression. Now the disadvantages of the pooled variance t, it has that added assumption of equal population variances, which most of the time is not going to be true. And so then the question is, how poorly does it perform when that assumption is not true? Well, sometimes it performs okay, and sometimes it performs very poorly when that assumption is violated, and we'll look at that in a little more detail in a simulation later. Now, the Welch procedure does not require the assumption of equal population variances, so we don't have that added restriction, that added assumption. And then it also works much better than the pooled variance T procedure in many situations. So if our population variances are actually different, much of the time, our Welch T procedure will work quite a bit better. So disadvantages are that it's only an approximate procedure, it's not an exact procedure. Works pretty well in a lot of spots, so that's not too much of a disadvantage. It's a bit of a pain to calculate those degrees of freedom, the, the formula is a bit complicated, uh, but in the modern computer age that's not much of a big deal. And it's not consistent with other common statistical techniques like regression and ANOVA. So the results might be a little bit different if we were to use those techniques we'll use later on uh, than if we use the Welch T. So a very natural question here is how poorly does the pooled variance T procedure perform when the standard deviations are different here, or equivalently the variances are actually different. So we're assuming the population variances are equal. What happens when they are actually different? Let's look at this via simulation. So we're going to simulate a sample from each of two normally distributed populations, and we're going to calculate a 95% confidence interval for mu1 minus mu2 using the pooled variance approach. We're going to do this 100,000 times, and then we're going to find the percentage of those 100,000 intervals that actually contains mu1 minus mu2. So if this procedure is working well, this percentage we find down here should be very, very close to this 95%. And if this procedure is working poorly, this percentage that we see in the simulation will be very different from 95%. So let's see what the results look like. Here are our results. And in this simulation, the standard deviation of population 1 is actually 10. Okay, I fixed that to be 10. And so here, a standard deviation for population 2 is 10. So in this column, sigma 1 and sigma 2 are equal. Our population standard deviations are equal, and of course our, our variances are equal. The values in the table very, very close to 95%, uh, meaning the procedure is working very well. And in theory, these values would be exactly 95%, but we're doing this through simulation only 100,000 times, and there's still a little sampling variability. So the pooled variance T procedure works perfectly when the standard deviations are equal. Now here we're doing this in some different spots, so I'm letting the standard deviation of the second population differ a little bit. And what we might see is when the sample sizes are equal, so sample sizes of 10 in both groups, well these values are actually still quite close to 95%. So when your sample sizes are equal, having different standard deviations is not a big deal. But when your sample sizes differ, so here I've got 10 in one group and 20 in another. Now we start to see some real problems. So for this case, say, we're going to be saying we have a 95% confidence interval, but in reality, the probability that that interval actually captures mu1 minus mu2 uh, in our sampling is only about 88.7%. So we're going to be quite a bit off from that uh, nominal value of 95% that we're stating. And over here, it's much, much higher, but that's still a, a bad thing. We're saying a 95% interval, but it's really actually closer to 98.2. So what we're stating as our confidence level is quite a bit different from reality. And over here, if we make this difference in sample sizes more extreme, then we see these bigger and bigger differences. So here, we'd be saying we have a 95% confidence interval, but in reality, it's actually closer to 68 and a half. So we're going to be way, way off. So the pooled variance T procedure can perform very poorly when the standard deviations are quite different, 
And this is especially bad when the sample sizes are quite different as well. Now in all of these, I didn't, don't list it here, but in all of these, if we were to list out the percentages for the Welch procedure, they'd all be pretty close to 95%. The Welch procedure would work quite well in, in all of these spots. Some points to note. The pooled variance procedure can perform very poorly when the population variances are very different. So if you're out there and the sample variances are very different, that would give some indication then that perhaps you shouldn't be using the pooled variance approach. Now I'm not going to give you an exact rule for that because it gets a little bit complicated because the problem is worse if the sample sizes are very different as well. So there are these two things. If your sample variances are very different and your sample sizes are very different, then you really probably shouldn't be using the pooled variance approach. But there is a real gray area there at times. Well, another important point here is that large sample sizes do not save us from this problem. So large sample sizes save us from non-normality, and we rely on the central limit theorem a lot, but the large sample sizes don't save us here. So if one of our groups has 10,000 observations and the other one has 50,000 observations and there's a big difference in the population variances, uh, well, the pooled T procedure is simply going to be working very poorly. So the next question is, another natural question is, if the Welch procedure works better than the pooled T in a lot of those spots, how much are we giving up if we actually use Welch's T when the population variances are equal? So I looked at that in another simulation. Here's a simulation of the ratio of the margins of error. So I take a margin of error for the Welch procedure, margin of error for the pooled variance procedure, and compare the, the margin of error. So now here, all in all of these situations, our population variances are equal, our population standard deviations are equal, and the pooled variance approach would be better. So the question is, how much worse is the Welch procedure? And if we look here, so I did this for a few different sample sizes, and if we look here, well, this uh, Welch procedure is, uh, has a larger margin of error, but it's not that much bigger. So the Welch procedure is a little bit bigger. We don't like that. We'd rather have the pooled variance margin of error, which is a little smaller. And when our sample sizes get bigger, it's a little bit less of an issue. Not much going on. We're giving up a little bit using the Welch procedure, but not a whole lot. So the lessons to be learned here, that we give up a little if we use the Welch procedure, when the population standard deviations are actually equal. But the Welch T procedure can perform much better than the pooled variance procedure when that's not the case, when that equal variance assumption is violated. But a lot of times there's a real gray area there about which one's the best procedure to use. So opinions can differ on which is the best procedures to use. Very good statisticians could argue both sides of it in certain cases. And there's a, a lot of times a real gray area where it doesn't matter a whole lot either.